Well, what is up all of you Ugnots and Jawas out there and welcome back to another episode of Mando Talk. I am your host as always, your boy Caleb Keller and joined alongside me this week is none other than Zach Horvath himself. Zach Horvath, how are you doing this fine, lovely evening? Well, I guess when people are listening, it's the early morning. That's right. That's right. You know, whenever, but regardless, (laughs) how are you doing right now? (laughs) Oh, I'm doing good. Uh, I'm I am super pumped to yeah. get into Bad Batch episode eight. Okay, uh, we have not talked, as we always say. I know. I, I actually didn't even watch the, your spoiler takeaway. Mm-hmm. Go check that out. It's on our YouTube channel. Uh, Caleb does a, a, a you know ten to fifteen minute quick takeaway of the the episode early in the Friday mornings. But yeah, I can't wait. I'm happy to be here. I uh, I'm super excited. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting episode to discuss. And it, like you said, I can't wait to hear what you thought about it because we are going in this completely blind as far as knowing how we feel about it. So I can't wait to hear your thoughts on it. But real quickly, again, this is the second week in a row that we're doing this. Remember, those of you out there listening, we're changing it up a little bit. Uh, We are no longer covering the news in our podcast episodes. Those are exclusively on YouTube live on Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So if you want to hear that content from us, Again, be sure that you're over there on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel so you can get that information. We have a ton of fun with it, man. Honestly, I'm still kind of buzzing from doing that. It's just so much fun. And I've got that like content itch going right now, like content creator. Like, what can we do? What else can we do to make this thing uh, continue to grow? Tons of fun. So come check us out if you haven't on those live streams. But a good time. I just want to throw that out there. And you can go back and check them out, too. Don't don't you know, don't feel obligated to watch the live stream. If you want to get caught up on your Star Wars news and you want to hear from us, go mm-hmm. to YouTube. We're going to leave the live streams on there. That mm-hmm. way it'll, you will kind of treat it as our news for the week. That way we can dig deeper into Bad Batch with the podcast episodes and really, you know, don't feel rushed. Because we felt like we were starting to get rushed with mm-hmm. all the news coming out and then a full episode discussion. So we broke it out and I'm really loving it. So I hope you guys are too. And let us know, but, you know, feel free to let us know what you think. But without further ado, Mm -hmm. let's get into it. Let's do it. Um, First thing that we always like to do is we like to talk about the Twitter poll. Uh, So Zach's going to be talking about that Twitter poll regarding uh, what our audience thought of this episode so far. And then after we read that poll, we'll share our general thoughts. And then after our general thoughts, we will, as promised, dive deep into episode eight titled Reunion. And again, if it wasn't clear, this is a heavy spoiler discussion. Click away. Come back if you haven't seen the recent episode of The Bad Batch. All right. Without further ado, Zach, hit us with that Twitter poll. What you got? Yep. So over uh, at Mando Talk on Twitter, follow us if you want to, you know, be part of the conversation. We do a poll every week asking the listeners, followers, uh, what they thought of the episode. And we uh, have four rankings and we start at not for me up to it's okay, up to good, but not great. And then top tier. So this week, first time ever, first time, hundred percent top tier, hundred percent, hundred percent. That's what I love to see everybody. Um, and Keller, where do you stand? Where, where do you rank it? I wholeheartedly agree, man. Um, and I'm, I'm interested to see your take for me. What made it top tier was the reveal and i'll just go ahead and spill the beans the reveal of cad bane yeah Hmm. spoiler (laughs) the reveal of cad bane making an appearance there toward the end absolutely just pushed it over the edge to top tier if it hadn't already gotten to that point uh what did you think though because again those that are listeners know very well that zach has not fully seen the clone wars yet so what did you think of the episode where would you rank it i mean i'm still going top tier Okay, good. Um, th- this is top tier for me. Um, I will s- I will be completely honest. I think I loved last week more. Just, yeah. just being straight up. Um, mm-hmm. I don't want to lie to you guys. I think I loved last week more. However, 
this week is pretty dang close for me. Um, yeah. I really love this episode and the character development we got and the action was great. It was nonstop. They knew, uh, I've been saying this a lot with all these good episodes. They knew what they wanted to do with this episode. And mm -hmm. again, they knew what they wanted. They had a plan. This is what we're going to get out of this episode. It's titled Reunion. I mean, it is a yeah. perfect title, um, but I loved it. Right. And speaking to that, the title of Reunion, I finally got something right. Crosshair did make a return, baby. <laughs> and it was did. great to see. Now, I do kind of have a complaint. I don't know if you share this complaint. Okay. As soon as I pulled up Disney Plus and I scroll over to click on Reunion, the latest episode, the thumbnail was Crosshair. Should I be bothered by them revealing that he was making a return? Or was that just me caring too much about finally seeing where Crosshair was at again? I think it's them saying, hey, this is titled Reunion. So it's obvious. <laughs> Stuck it up. No, <laughs> no, no I think like, that's fair. I think that's fair. <laughs> I, I, I saw that as well, actually. And I was like, oh, all right, here we go. So it, it honestly it. made me want to click more. But yeah. um, first thought, I, I, the first thing that hit my brain was like, Oh boy, he got it right. <laughs> he was on it. <laughs> it took two weeks to get it right. So I don't even think that that would yeah, classify counts. as being on it. it counts. <laughs> whatever, whatever, man. Well, listen, let's dive into it. Yeah. We've shared our general thoughts. We both think it was top tier. Uh, so there's really nothing else to say except to dive it deeper into it. So the first thing that happens in this episode, again, if the thumbnail didn't give it away, the opening scene of the episode gave it away. We opened straight up on Camino, and I feel like as soon as we see Camino, we know that we're going to get a few things. We got Admiral Rampart giving Crosshair the direct order to terminate Clone Force 99 if he happens to see them on Bracca. So what that means then is that the Scrapper Guild's message was received by the Empire. But also in that, so usually when we go to Camino, we see Rampart now at this point, Crosshair, but we get some Kaminoan shot as well. And Rampart is specifically just saying, kill them all. And Prime Minister Lama Su is not happy with that because, again, a few episodes back, it seems like forever ago, they made it clear, the Kaminoans made it clear that they need Omega in order to stay relevant. And Rampart's order of killing them all clearly goes against that. So we obviously see here that they are struggling with this decision Zach, what do you what did you think about that opening scene on Camino? Uh, and yeah, go from there. It was great. Uh, I thought it set the episode up well. We we didn't waste any time. We saw him. We got information. We got a little backstory with what's going on between the Empire and everybody, including Crosshair. I thought that was great. Um, yeah. Just being straight up, like yeah, terminate him. I was like, oh, all right, mm -hmm. here we go. And Crosshair, not even flinching at that right well it was like oh gosh like yeah man it like hurts a little bit right because it's like oh because mm -hmm. he just he's just doing what he's told he, he's a good soldier right so right um i thought it set up the episode great it was quick it was fast we got a lot of information that's what i love yeah now that was like we've said alluded to crosshair that's the first time we've seen him in a while i forgot how cool he was man with his little toothpick that he just and his voice man on and <laughs> d bradley baker Yes, is incredible. Uh -huh. um, I, I I was watching this episode with Taylor, my wife, and I told her I was like, one dude does all those dudes. Like yep. it's just amazing. She's like, really? I was like, yeah, even that dude. And I pointed to Crosshair. She's like, wow. I was like, yeah, it's yeah. incredible. So it, shout out to him. He, I mean, yes. wow. It takes incredible talent to voice clones that are all very alike and look alike in most cases. But yet, when you hear their voice, you're like, oh, that's Wrecker. Oh, that's Hunter, without even looking at them. So, yes, huge shout out. And I'm glad you mentioned that, because I don't even think we've alluded to that talent at I all. Mean, I mean, yeah, I don't even process. know if we brought it up. It, yeah, maybe but once it deserves or twice, to be brought up for sure. <laughs> every time the credits roll and I just see D. Bradley Baker as yeah. the Bad Batch, it's like, <laughs> oh, my gosh, this dude is yeah. amazing. But Incredible yeah, so. talent. Well, again, the opener of the episode was fantastic. Short and quick. It got us going. It set the mood, too. We were going to get some pretty dark A little stuff. dark, a little heavy. Yeah. Yeah. So we then flash to the Bad Batch, Clone Force 99. Wrecker is training Omega in disarming some uh, weaponry. 
I thought that we were eventually going to come back to her having to use that skill. Uh, we didn't really get that in this episode. We we got her arming them, but not disarming them. Now, typically in the past, in these episodes, a skill that she learns is something she eventually has to reapply later in the episode. But we didn't see that in this one. Do you think this might come back up, though, eventually, her having to do this it, certain skill? It has to, right? Yeah. I mean, why would they take this much time to show you know her and Wrecker obviously bonding again? Right. But yeah, I mean, it's so specific. It has to come back at some point, um, I'd like to believe. I think so. And oh, there was something else that I wanted to say to that, but I completely forgot what I was going to say. Oh, well. Oh, well, maybe maybe it'll pop it'll back come up. back. Like, maybe. But hey, you're right. The brother sister relationship again that they keep pointing to hardcore Wrecker and Omega is beautiful. And I just remember what I was going to say. It's like you talked about earlier. Every fine detail in this show clearly matters. So mm -hmm. I definitely think that that means we're coming back to this skill eventually. Has to. Uh, but we just don't know how because, you know, we know what happens to Omega at the end of this thing. But anyway, next up, Hunter persuades the crew to stay. And I thought this was extremely important because, again, last week we talked about how these guys are now struggling with this bounty hunter lifestyle. And Hunter makes this decision to stay on Braca to try to even the score, even the bounty, uh, or not have anything owed to Sid. And that results in some major problems. So Echo, not, yes, Echo, Wrecker, and Omega get spotted by the Scrapper Guild. They have this big showdown there for a second. They all come back and they're like, no, Hunter, we need to leave. Rex warned us about this. Hunter's just like, no, this is easy money for us. This is what life is like for us now. I thought that was a huge and major decision. And in the end, not a very good one. What did you think about Hunter's decision making in this episode? I I think I am on Hunter's side. Um, I don't know if that's a uh, hot take. I don't know, but um, I I think he understands deeper than the group what they need to do to survive, and I don't think the rest of the group has really gotten on the train of not being a soldier and being a bounty hunter or just survivor at this point. Okay. Um, so I, I have to take a side because I would, I think I would do the same where I would be like, guys, we have, we have this, you know, cash of cash of potential mm -hmm. cash, right? A cache. Is that how you say that? Cache, sure. Cash? sure. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff that we can pay back our debt to Sid. So we have to do it. I mean, that's what that we don't even have money. We got to do something so we can keep surviving. And so I'll be honest, I didn't even consider him not being right because that's mm. in my brain. I was like, okay. oh, OK, well, what, what, what did you think? Did you think the opposite? Well, you yeah, know, I immediately thought that this is well, we knew the plot eventually crossed yeah. in their way. We knew that it was going to result in trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's easy for me to be like, oh, Hunter, you're making a horrible decision because I know Crosshair is coming. But I get what you're saying. Like living in the moment, it as a, a leader of a group, having to, you know, make sure that everyone's getting their needs, it would be hard to avoid that decision of look, guys, we have to do this. Yeah. Like we have it and we have no money. So if you guys want to actually fly around and eat, you know, we need to do this now. Mm -hmm. And we and we we're not gonna stumble upon this somewhere else like it's going to be very yeah. rare that we can just pay back our debt and maybe even have more um and i know we have in our notes here i want to give a discord shout out do it uh to darth chewy he uh he or she i'm not sure uh made a great observation that darth. the scrapper guild uh, looks very similar to some of the knights of ren designs great yeah. call out because I thought when they showed that close up when he's like you know he has the little binoculars or whatever I was mm -hmm. like ooh that looks familiar that looks really cool yeah and I don't know if that you know I don't know if there's any sort of you know connection but yeah. it's sick yeah, and yeah, I yeah. like that it's a great yeah. call out yeah I definitely don't think there's a connection there but there's definitely inspiration at least I would say mm -hmm. but I, I again, agree correct me if I'm wrong Scrapper Guild was in Jedi Fallen Order gamer Zach over there. Don't, don't remember. remember. <laughs> nah, don't remember. Okay. I would like to think they would be. I want to say they if were. they were on Braca, but yeah, um, I want to say they were. But 
yes again i gotta out. freaking go back and play that game man <laughs> I got to go back. But yeah, uh, so Discord shout out. Go go join our Discord. It's in the link. Yeah. Um, it's free. As you can see, you can be a part of the show. Also, you can be a part of our live stream. We're doing some questions out of the Discord now as well. Mm -hmm. And it's a good time. We're talking all week about Star Wars. So come join us if you, right. uh, if you want to. Okay, so next in the episode, I think, and again, this is going back to that conversation. I think this is still more proof, though, that they eventually need to get out of this bounty hunter lifestyle. Would you agree mm -hmm. to that, at least even though Hunter, you know, maybe made the best decision in the moment, but still as the audience, we know to trust yeah. Rex. We know that Rex's opinion is probably always going to be right. Uh, so I still think this is something that Hunter is going to look back to and be like, OK, guys, we got to switch it up. We got to go do something different. Yeah. And I, uh, I think we talked about this maybe two weeks ago or a week ago where it feels like they're kind of getting into a corner of they're going to go with the good guys here. Yeah. Right. Like it's, it's making it blatantly obvious that they can't handle the bounty hunter life. They have morals. They, they don't, they're not willing to do what it takes to be a bounty hunter basically. Yeah. And so what are they going to do? They're going to take Rex's advice and they're going to go find the, rebels or whatever you know they yeah. call them but are we are we 100 and that was a question that i actually wanted to ask you are we 100 percent clear that it is the rebellion that he is we're, we're not for? okay technically i think we're not but i thought that i just that's how i interpreted it was he's you know now working with the rebellion but maybe right. maybe not uh, uh, well i'm definitely catching a vibe of him you know being part of that fulcrum idea uh, that ahsoka has begun starting probably getting close to this time frame. Uh, but I would classify that as part of the rebellion a little bit. So regardless, either way, I think against the empire, right? Just yeah. Against the empire overall. Mm -hmm. I think that again, we predicted that last week, I think, but I just wanted to double down on that and not, correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, but I think as a show, I think we're predicting that eventually the crew is going to decide to join Rex's cause. I mean, agree with that. Yeah, I, okay. I don't know what else they're going to do, if I'm being yeah. honest. Like, we've we, we've got the end of this episode, which is going to be a big backbone going forward. Yes. But um, I think that's the... the. If anything, I think it may be like an end of season one going to a season two type situation. Where yeah. in season one, they're now officially part of the Rebels. Someone, they've either got crosshair back or he sacrificed himself. I'm still leaning towards one of the two. I know, or, I know. Um, and uh, they're with the Rebels. So that's that's a hot take that I have, I guess, a personal prediction. But I'm not confident. Yeah. But I, I think, think that's, that's a, where we're, lean, where we're leaning. I think that's a good prediction. Well, continuing with the episode, mm -hmm. we get again, it's like every time the Kaminoans pop up, we get these weird just one minute scene with them to just catch up on what they're so thinking. weird and they're just weird looking and but i'm here for it don't get oh, me yeah. wrong oh because yeah. it's great insight behind what's really going on behind the scenes throughout this show and i love that they're like doing something right yeah I i'm happy to see that they have an angle as well because it makes sense they would have an angle why would mm -hmm. they trust the empire their their baby their pride and joy the clones they don't care about them anymore so right. Of course, they're going to try to play the game as well. And I love seeing these little snippets of these weird looking creatures. I love it. Yeah. So Prime Minister Lamasu calls upon more bounty hunters to, quote unquote, find the young clone intact. So I know when they initially mentioned that they needed some of their clone, whatever, DNA, whatever, to make more because they're still wanting to be relevant. Uh, we weren't 100% sure if that meant Omega or all of them or just any of them. But is th I think this is 100% confirmation that it is Omega, and especially once we get to the end of the episode. But when this scene was going on, I had two things that came to my mind. Number one, does this mean Fennec Shand is working for the Kaminoans? Because we saw earlier in the season that yeah. Fennec Shand was hunting Omega specifically down. That's how I interpreted it, okay. was, Good. was that you know she is working for them um okay. and it would and it makes sense i think we even said that that was probably them yeah. that was uh she was working for but yeah i th i think that's what that means and 
maybe not, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty confident in that. But the second question that I also had in that moment is, could this lead to Boba Fett returning and working for the Kaminoans? Because the quote was just more bounty hunters, not necessarily just one or two or three, but who knows how many. And we know that the Kaminoans in episode two attack the clones. They're familiar with working with Jango Fett. They're familiar with the young kid of Boba Fett. So it would make sense that if they get news that, oh, Boba Fett, one of the guys or one of the little kids that used to run around here, let's call him up. Let's see if he can go hunt down Omega. Do you think this could be an avenue behind Boba Fett getting involved with the show? I didn't even consider it. Um, I didn't even think about it, but I don't hate it. Actually, okay. I, I don't know where he lands in terms of, you know, his life at this moment. I, right. I don't know how old he is and what he would be doing. But yeah, we did some if this could be oh, this could be cool. If we could see insight of how Boba Fett starts dipping his toe in the bounty hunter waters. Mm-hmm. You talk about enticing. Yeah, Whoa. like that'd well. be pretty sick. And maybe they could tie it into Book of Boba Fett. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm getting crazy over here, but no. Well, first of all, what I was going to say was number one, you do get a little sense of Boba Fett going toward the bounty hunter lifestyle in this little show that we keep talking about the clone wars. (laughs) I I was going to ask you that if we got any, maybe not even in the shows, but in comics or books or anything, if we get, more information about Boba Fett right. getting into it. So right. it sounds like we do in Clone Wars. Yes, we do. But, and then to answer your second question, we kind of did some calculation in Discord during our spoil in our spoiler thread, mm. our channel for the Bad Batch. We're leaning toward Boba Fett. He was around 10 to 12 in Attack of the Clones. And we know that there's a three-year gap between Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. So he's around 15, 16 tops maybe. Uh, So, you know, maybe in Star Wars, that's an age where you start getting, you know, more independent and start getting into that bounty hunter lifestyle, if that's something that you want to do. And especially in Boba's scenario, because let's be honest, I mean, this is going to be dark, but he has no one. I must say everyone he's ever known is either dead or or going to die, probably. So pretty dark, except he knows the Kaminoans. So that's why I'm thinking like if if and and I'm not saying this has to happen or if this is going to happen. But if they do want to, in fact, bring Boba Fett into the Bad Batch, I think this is the avenue that they could easily, easily do that. Mm -hmm. I I, you've you've talked me up to a 10 percent chance if that tells you anything. Okay, (laughs) it goes from not even thinking about it to 10 percent. So never tell me the odds. (laughs) That was a whole yeah. on solo, but whatever. <laughs> hey, we'll roll with it. That's all right. So what's next? Next in the episode is when it gets really interesting. Crosshair then arrives on Bracca, and we get that incredible shot, that cinematic shot of him coming off his cruiser with all of the other clone troops Dude, surrounding. It was Chills. straight up Chills. thick. I, it looked like a movie, like a movie movie. Yeah. It was awesome shot when they were just all lined up and he's got his squad i was like oh oh, oh, this is awesome i'm so glad you thought the same because i literally said to taylor i was like that's a sick shot right there yeah well and it's really the entire episode every shot and honestly the whole show they have done a great job of really pushing themselves with animation and i thought that you know clone wars animation i thought couldn't be topped but they just keep pushing it and pushing yeah, I, the it. The lighting in this episode with the with the uh, flashlights, yeah. amazing. I'm a yeah. sucker for flashlights that are amazing. Like, go play Last of Us if you haven't. We're going to go play it right now, actually. Turn the podcast off. I'm sorry. <laughs> but go play Last of Us. It's probably my favorite game of all time. But amazing flashlight work in that game. Yeah. Um, and so I always look at that. Great in this episode. Because... If you do it right, it can really draw attention, and I, mm-hmm. I love it. Um, well, but yeah, when he walks out of that freaking ship, dude, it, it's good. Mwah. It's good, but it sounds like you need to uh, do the show alone the rest of the way because I've never played The Last of Us, man. Oh my god! Yeah, all right, turn it off. Turn your camera, See you, off. dude. Go, yeah, week. go play The Last of Us right now because it's incredible. I think it's actually the one year anniversary of Last of Us Part Two was like okay. this last week. There you go. So, there you go. Hey, 
go play both honestly of them, but... i will probably end up seeing pedro pascal's show before i actually play the game is that wrong of me i don't know i don't think it is i want to okay. actually don't play the game then because okay. i want to hear your take um and then you could get my take on okay. that's fair that's fair well but definitely listen. oh god i can't <laughs> wait for that but yeah, yeah crosshair shows up crosshair shows up <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And man, they they really lean into displaying Crosshair's brilliance. So he predicts that they're going to tap into the, the Empire's comms to try to avoid them. And he knows exactly where they go. It leads to this incredible standout, essentially, where they are surrounding the Bad Batch. And, you know, the Bad Batch, how they are. They always come up with these brilliant ideas. They turn those cannons on and it allows the crew to escape. Initially, we thought that they were going to get away but before i leave that wasn't it great to hear that that canon noise again at least for me because it takes me back to revenge of the sith at the very beginning of that uh movie whenever that star or star geez that battle up in space mm -hmm. is going down and you can hear that noise i loved it you're uh, going nerdy on me and i love it because i i didn't even <laughs> i didn't hey, even man. think about it but it i love that <laughs> i love that you you called that out i loved everything about crosshair from this point yes. on in the episode loved it it's mm. crosshair firing on all cylinders he knows exactly what's about to happen every moment of the battle he's like this is gonna right. happen they're gonna do this go around them go to their ship they're gonna go to the back go that way like Oh, yeah, man. Well, so and the good. next one is that he predicts once they escape initially, he yet again predicts that they're going to escape through the engine because who would do that? And he knows that the Bad Batch would be the guys that would get that yep. done. So and as soon as they there waiting for him, marking them or trying to at least <laughs> as soon as they start walking through the engine, and he's like, oh, yeah, this is the engine and blah, blah, blah. It's like they're going to turn it on. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to turn it again, on back to the cinematography of this thing. That engine cutting on and the visuals, the lighting, like you alluded to. Holy man. I know, man. Where it starts to like it like flickers and then it starts yeah. to like kind of suck everything into the into the little thing in the middle. I don't know what you call right. it, but it is <laughs> awesome. And even I want to shout out tech because he talks about the engineering of the ships. Oh, and I I've always you, I knew I've, you were gonna love that. I've okay. talked a few times about how amazing these ships would be if they were actually real. And like, uh -huh. if we actually had these humongous ships with humongous engines and the engineering, and he called out the engineering of them. And I was like, yes, thank didn't, you. Didn't the rest of the crew though, tell him to shut up. Or Everyone's like, like, no. like shut up. <laughs> yeah. They're like, uh, or whatever. Yeah. He said something like that, but I was just That's like, hilarious. yes, tech. Thank you. <laughs> Cause they are amazing. And yeah. it's so sad. They have a whole planet of junk, but that's true that's true well they the crew realizes they are surrounded in that engine and they're trying to come up with a plan and record makes this just quick little one-liner that i wanted to see if you had thoughts to he says should we use plan seven or something along oh those lines. yeah what is plan seven Do no you have idea because i don't know for sure no <laughs> idea but i love that they said it um because it's going to come back again yeah they're planting the seed Okay. Plan oh, seven. So? Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I, I, okay. I would if I was sports betting, I would put the money <laughs> hashtag all in, all in, baby, on that uh, coming back. Uh, because I it was it Echo that says like this has nothing to do with Plan Seven. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think it's definitely mm. going to come back. Um, Man. I hope it comes back because I want to know what the crap Plan Seven yeah. is. I was trying. So initially, when I saw it for the first time, I heard him say it. I was mm -hmm. like. OK, he must be alluding to that. They've tried to use six different plans so far, and this is now plan seven. It was just like a one liner joke. That's how my initial mm -hmm. interpretation of it was record just being like, oh, seven times we've tried something. <laughs> and that's just the, the number that he used, decided okay. to use. But so, and I read it as about like, it, yeah, backup plan. After thinking about it, that what you were talking about there is what I then began to. Oh, maybe this is something they've always you know, yeah. had they have it cooked up that they're going to do something, whatever that is. And we know it's not related to uh, at least escaping an engine. So, <laughs> sure. um, <laughs> so well, who, who could have predicted they would find themselves in that predicament? <laughs> yeah. Yikes. But I, I loved the, I loved crosshair just sitting out there and, you know, basically just ping in the side telling them like, yeah, we gotcha. 
Like, that, what are you going to do, big boys? So what Crosshair was doing right there, when I play shooter games, that's my strategy. Right, That's there. you. Just I got you. Stay in one spot where I know people probably won't come and get me and just <laughs> shoot at people as they yeah. come up. <laughs> and and it, and one thing I want to call out on Crosshair too, he hits his head pretty hard a few times in this episode. Okay. Oh, I didn't even notice okay. that. And of course, you know, you, you got that. You got it all covered, man. You know, um, because when he shoots the cannons, Crosshair goes flying and mm. he gets, he hits pretty hard. Then by the end of this freaking episode, He's in bandages and he's all jacked up. So I don't know. Man, I didn't I even know. think about that. That's a great point. You know, mentally, I was just I was done thinking about inhibitor chips because the crew just got theirs removed. Yeah. Crosshair ain't part of that crew, though, right now. He's still got his. Yeah. And we've seen Wrecker. The reason I'm on it now is because I've we've been watching for Wrecker. But, you yeah. know, who's to say it doesn't work the opposite way where instead of them turning on, maybe they fault and turn off right um and mm -hmm. we'll see flashes of crosshair coming back but that i do not feel confident in that one like i felt confident nope, in record nope, nope, nope. <laughs> we're, we're clipping what you said we're avoiding that's fine you, we're avoiding you, know what? you saying that you're not confident in it we're gonna make it sound like you think that that was 100 you're gonna clip truth. me saying like 100 percent <laughs> going to happen <laughs> exactly. but um yeah no i I loved this entire scene, man. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's going to turn into anything with Crosshair, but him sitting out there knowing exactly, again, what they're going to do somehow. He knew what they're going to do, and he already had the dude up there working on the engine. Yeah. yeah. And he's and then when they're, he's like, all right, it's ready. He's like, engage, baby. I was like, oh, Crosshair. Dang, yeah. boy. You, yeah, it, it really was a great scene. And the crew eventually comes up with their plan. It was them using explosive to break the engine basically in half. And when that happens, that engine is still running, pumping out heat, baby. That thing just starts falling and it goes right toward Crosshair's path. And Crosshair, I mean, to put it point blank, gets fried like some chicken tenders straight yep. up. <laughs> he gets fried worse than I thought, if I'm being honest. Like, yeah. I didn't even think, I thought he'd, you know, oh, wow. But no, this dude gets like roasted. Right, and, and we can go ahead and just talk about, like, what he eventually looked like before the yeah. episode was yeah. over. I know that's not next linearly in the episode, but we'll go ahead and talk about it. Like you said, initially when they showed him, you know, burnt, it was just like, a it looked like just smoke kind of all it looked, Yeah, it looked like soot. It like didn't on really it. look like he was hurt that bad, like you said, initially. But then, you know, when they come back to him and he's got, like, bandages and he's oh, got like, oh, like mummified bandages with yeah. the with a breather on i was like oh dang like i didn't know that's crosshair i was right. like who's in the bandages and i was like oh gosh is he yeah. that bad and but, again so. we alluded to this character i think in last week's live stream dengar he is a bounty hunter I, I got Dengar vibes when i saw him look like that and i know you might not know what he looks like nope uh I'm adding but a lot of content, you know. I know that <laughs> some people, I have seen it online, believe it or not. Some people are thinking that this could allude to Crosshair turning into Dengar that we see in the original trilogy. Uh, but I want to say there's too much can like legit canon out there to get that gives Dengar's backstory that has nothing to do with Crosshair. So unless it's one of those situations, kind of like that Rancor earlier in this show where they're like, oh, ignore everything else that you've seen in canon so far. Crosshair's turned into Dengar, which that is not what I'm saying. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> but some people out there think that that could be a possibility because it he gives those vibes anyway. But yeah, I know I was getting kind of nerdy with that. No, now, I love it. With Crosshair, this is a question that I have for you, Zach. Do we see him begin to be treated like damaged goods by the Empire from this point on? Now that he's beat up like that, That's or great, are they going to specifically question. realize his skills and value that and treat him to try to get him back in action? That's a great question, and I didn't think about it when I, in the moment. Um, mm -hmm. I thought what I initially thought after I saw him all jacked up was he's. This is going to be the turning point, right? 
Yeah. He's either going to go next question. Yeah. He's going to go good Mm -hmm. by the end of it. Or man, the reason I'm leaning more towards what I'm about to say is because of his actions at the end where he's like losing it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't remember the words he was saying was like, get me in the ship or something like that. But he was like fired up literally. Um, Yeah. (laughs) And I felt like he was just mad and getting worse and worse. Mm -hmm. So, um, Mm -hmm. but is going back to your question, I was stalling if you didn't realize. Um, I think it's going to be there. He's damaged goods. Um, And that's where I lean only because we know how the empire is. If you can't serve us in this moment, move on. We got other people. We're the most powerful thing in the galaxy. We ain't got time for you. Next man up. That's, that's exactly how I feel on it. And I think that, I think that lends itself to his redemption. Yeah, um, and that's that's what I was going to lean into. Like, I think this is, like you said, the turning point. I think this is the start of, oh, at, us as an audience need to visually see Crosshair get to this point to start feeling something bad for him to where, you know, he we're okay with the eventual redemption path that he's going down toward. You're right. I, I think you're my right. Take. I, I think you're right. You guys, you know, listeners, let us know what y'all think on this. I really am interested because I'm torn. I, I don't, I don't know really either way. I will, mm-hmm. I will go with you for sake of this conversation, but I don't know because it's just so much interesting character development for Crosshair. I love it. I love that character. It's so good. But uh, this moment was, was pretty, pretty dark uh it was getting all wrapped up but like that i was like oh my goodness man it was heavy i mean yeah i mean i felt bad for him a little bit i was like god dude and you did it it to yourself a little but um, i have only seen this episode once but i'm trying to think back to if the music was like getting me feeling those emotions too in the moment i'm sure that i'm sure it was knowing kevin kiner's stuff but i'm struggling to remember just what was playing i don't even remember crosshair saying anything but he did he did i, say something. I remember him like yelling and like getting standing up and like fighting them when yeah, they he was definitely resisting there he was resisting their um but comfort, maybe i I'm, guess you could say i don't know maybe i'm crazy i don't know but i think you're right i think they treat him as damaged goods okay. i mean maybe not maybe not because of how legit he is but i he i still legit. i think that they're going to be like we're the empire we don't want to deal with you we'll try to heal you real quick but if you don't see ya yeah fair and okay that's fair you, you said that perfectly listen <laughs> next thing is the biggest thing of this week and i'm yep. sure by the time that this podcast episode is released people are talking about it non-stop on star wars twitter Right now, I hope people are being respectful of it as far as spoilers go, because I really enjoyed this moment, not knowing that it was coming. I hope everyone else out there can enjoy that moment. So Hunter and Omega are back to the ship. We see all these troopers dead on yep. the ground. Or maybe not dead. Maybe they're just stunned, but I'm they're assuming they're, they're dead. They're murdered. They're dead. Um, <laughs> and when I saw that, I thought Finnick Shand. I mean, yep, this is a that's character ex- that we've already that seen. Is exactly we know that what she's hunting Omega down. It would make sense. We've already assumed that Fennec Shand was the one that Lama Su was referring to as far as the bounty hunter that is chasing, quote-unquote, the young clone intact. Um, so I thought it was Fennec Shand. But we hear the voice. And as soon as you hear the voice, then they show the guy. He's got the cowboy hat on. He looks the part. Cad freaking Bane is back one of my all-time favorite clone wars characters that i felt did not get the ending that he deserved and here he is ladies and gentlemen first of all what i need our listeners to do i need you to comment on the youtube video your thoughts on cad bane coming back or if you are on our podcast again click that discord link and tell us what you think about cad bane being back because right now I am ecstatic for this because just the character fits the mold as far as what I really love about Star Wars. When it gets really westerny and it's like this rugged character, yeah. <laughs> that just 
Mm, I'm filled with goodness right now, Zach. What did you think about Cad Bane returning? Because again, we've alluded to this. It seems like every yep. week we're alluding to this. Well, you haven't, yeah. you haven't seen the Clone Wars, <laughs> which is great because we get another perspective of the fan base of people that haven't potentially seen this character before. What did you yeah. think, Zach? I instantly loved this character. If that tells Let's you go. anything, Let's go. <laughs> I saw this dude, didn't know who he was, won't lie. And I'm sure Star Wars listeners out there are like, <gasps> right. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. It's blasphemous. But I instantly was like, I have to know everything about this guy because I, that it, you're right. I, this, he embodies everything I want out of a Star Wars character. Yeah. He's, got the voice he's slow talking he's got the westerny he's got the draw he's got the cowboy dad he's got the droid with him like oh man this this scene is probably one of the best in the show by far yes um, for me i'm gonna say yes already i don't know if yeah. it'll be top <laughs> i mean it I, again i don't even have the draw to this guy so i can't imagine what you're feeling but just coming in not knowing who he is mm. i was like hunter you're dead like uh, this dude is going to kill you. <laughs> like, okay, so I, I really thought like, is this the end? I, I'm not right. I mean, I'm alluding to, you know, I'm jumping ahead, but no, you're good, man. This shootout, this standoff oh. incredibly crafted. And yeah. Done. What do you, what, what's your thoughts? Are you going to agree? Oh no. I 1000% agree with you. Like I yeah. said, that vibe yeah. and that's why i love the mandalorian so much is because they play on that vibe so much and it, i know cad bane just embodies that vibe so yeah i'm i'm all in hashtag all in on cad yeah. bane being yeah. back but i do want to make a connection for those of you that are aware of this or maybe not aware of this this is very similar to that shootout that is in the unfinished episode of cad bane fighting Boba Fett and I know in our discord we've talked about you know is this the avenue again we've alluded to it is this the avenue of where Boba Fett could come into play uh, or flip side of that is this an avenue of Cad Bane could somehow come into the book of Boba Fett like it's one or the other I think one of them is going to happen either Boba Fett's going to show up in the Bad Batch alongside Cad Bane or Cad Bane's going to make an appearance in the book of Boba Fett even though it's canon wise way in the future but again tamara morrison last week said you know we're, we're going to be going back to important things for boba fett that's right so there's potential there but so anyway you gotta I give me a little backstory up. here like okay. are they are they enemies or are they frenemies well so again boba is very young during the clone yeah. wars initially so this unfinished episode is when boba's got finally he's gotten his armor Okay. his father's armor and he's repainted it all and i don't know if you've ever noticed this with boba fett's helmet how it's got the dent in the oh, yeah. forehead of it mm -hmm. in this unfinished episode the cad bane and boba fett shoot dent. out cad bane hits him that's where the dent from the helmet comes oh my god play. i need that i need that I instantly and i need it in either the bad batch or the book of boba fett i need it in book of boba fett is where i need that live action. i want i need live action cad bane and don't make him look weird who would be a good performer to play cad bane you know honestly mm. who i think of is someone that's not possible anymore and that's timothy timothy oliphant you know dude he's, dude he's Van. you say this for a tenth, for a tenth of a second i thought it was Cobb vanth in the, in the ship because i didn't know who this person cad, cad bane was right so wow. and he's talking and i was like wait a second and then you see the lean silhouette and then you see the holsters. I was like, oh, my God, is this is this what Cobb Vance doing? And then you see this guy and I was like, oh, well, this dude's awesome. I mean, it's not Cobb Vance, but it's awesome. But no, seriously, I thought it was Cobb Vance for for a split second. I was like, that doesn't make any sense, but OK. And then it wasn't him. But yeah, um, that's exactly what I thought of. OK, and. I mean, I guess you couldn't do him now. I don't no. know who who it would be to play this character but i where i fall on it is just make him like ig88 or or was he ig88 ig11 ig11 uh, sorry yeah um and make it just the cg character 
and then have it voiced by this person, whoever does Cad Bane. Um, but it's going to be hard to do in live action. So that, that yeah. kind of lends itself to animation just for the fact that he's this different creature and sure, you don't yeah. want it to look goofy, but I want to see it in live action. Cause I yeah. think that'd be sick. But regardless, again, in my opinion, and I might be wrong again, I think this is going to wind up Boba Fett either coming into bad batch alongside Cad Bane or flip side Cad Bane into book of boba those of you listening you let me know what you think maybe i'm completely wrong and tell me if i'm completely wrong but yeah. regarding the shootout mm-hmm. cad bane smokes hunter smokes it like not even like it was close I w- no <laughs> it wasn't close at all like i mean hunter is so slow that he hits the droid like mm-hmm. that's how fast cad bane was on this yeah. on this which again i'm glad they did this if Hunter would have pulled it out and like hit this dude, I'd have been like, what's the point? All right. Like, <laughs> so he somehow smokes this gunslinger bounty hunter. But yeah. no, I'm so glad they did it. This Hunter gets smoked in the chest. Yeah. Now, did you think he was dead initially? No. Okay. I okay. didn't. I was like, I don't know how they're going to answer this. He got literally shot in the heart, but um, I don't know, you know. And I think they say, oh, he got shot in his chest plate. Chest plate, yeah. It's like, Come on. you're murdered, <laughs> Hunter. I'm sorry. If this is the Wild West, you just got got by <laughs> Cad Bane. All right? If this is Tombstone, <laughs> you are um, uh, uh, Johnny Ringo. All right? <laughs> you just got got. <clears throat> yeah. He's slow. Now, slow as Christmas. Say- he needs to work on that draw is what that tells me. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Uh, for a, for a millisecond, I was worried. I think it was the initial just hit and okay. seeing him drop. I was like, "Yeah, I don't want to lie to you. Are we I, really doing this <laughs> again?" The same kind of Cobb Van thing. For tenth of a second, I went, "Oh!" It wasn't like I thought he was dead. It was just like, "Oh my god, he just got smoked." And I thought what I thought was going to happen was Hunter was going to do something cool with his knife. I thought he was going to like throw Ooh, his knife or something. That would have been it. cool. Because then it probably would have been one of those situations where he got Hunter got got he got shot. Yeah, but, but he like knifes him in the leg or something. To, yeah. That'd so that's that's what I oh, thought man. was going to happen, but obviously cool. it didn't. And he gets shot in the heart, and for for a split second, I literally was like, oh, and I was yeah. like, no way, no freaking way. If well, it had been like Tech or Echo, uh-huh. I think I would have been like, oh, oh, he's dead. But with it being Hunter, yeah, that's true. I just I couldn't see it. That's true. No, that's a good point. Well, Omega also gets stunned, mm-hmm. and at this point, oh, Cat I gotta Bane say something here. Omega, yes, yeah. for a split second, I thought he's about to murder her. I for I don't know why I thought that, but just the way he walks up to her and he's like, "Sorry, little lady," and I was, "Oh, oh, wait, wait," <laughs> but that, of course, that gave me like Thanos vibes. Sorry, like, little, sorry, little. One. Yeah, <laughs> it was in, it was a great line and very well done. Um, I I, I love this Cad main character already, yeah. and well, I'm, I'm so glad you feel this way because yeah, I was like, sorry, Omega, he's way cooler than you. Like this is amazing. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Well, and those of you that saw the quick takeaway video, you could tell early on in that video. I was because again, those quick takeaways, I do them like. I mean, mm. literally a minute after I finished the episode, yeah. I was a little stunned still. Like yeah. I was kind of, you know, not like emotional as far as crying, but emotional thinking about what Omega just witnessed. She mm. probably thinks Hunter is dead That's whenever right. she comes to uh, and she gets stunned. And man, I was kind of just like literally what I'm doing right now. I'm just looking at the camera like. And Welcome, we're talking guys. about we're talking about the Bad Batch. I, <laughs> yeah. I am bummed right now. I apologize. <laughs> we, we talked about the music. I thought the music was very well done at the end of this episode where yes. it just kind of is dead. It's just like it just ends. Yeah. And you're just left with like. Uh, what's happened? Because yeah. I mean, a lot happens in this last like five minutes. Crosshair gets melted. Well, mm-hmm. they're about to die. Crosshair gets melted. They get to the ship. Hunter gets literally smoked. Omega mm-hmm. sees him die, quote, quote unquote. unquote. Um, so, so she thinks. So she thinks. Uh, she gets taken. 
presumably, right? Mm -hmm. And then we get the really cool scene cool where scene where yes. you're inside Hunter's mask and you see him waking up and Wrecker's shooting fools and Tex talking to him. Whoever whoever decided that mm -hmm. very well done because yes. I loved that scene and that's one thing that i mean it lends itself to animation is that you could do these different scenes and it doesn't take you right. out yeah so awesome and yeah. me being a nerd i was like so his helmet turns on when he's alive when he's awake that's cool i didn't even think about that but you're that's correct, me being man. dumb that's, yeah. that means nothing <laughs> it means nothing to the show but instantly i was like oh so his his helmet knows to turn on. That's sick. Okay. <laughs> hey, that's a but. that's a great uh, observation that I did not recognize. That's what I'm dwelling on on the Star Wars show. <laughs> hey, um, that's that's fine. That's fine. Well, it was the, such a good ending to the to the episode. And the episode ends again rather dark. Hunter says, "Just quote unquote, we need to find her." And that's where we're left. So, I mean, where do we go from here? Is the thing that we're just going to think about here for to end this thing. Uh, we know we know for sure that the Bad Batch is going to try to track down Cad Bane. I guess that's going to take them back to Camino if Cad Bane is in fact working for the Kaminoans. Yep. Again, but I'm still thinking that Crosshair is going to be treated like damaged goods. And I agree with something you said earlier in this episode. I think this is definitely not just a turning point for Crosshair but a turning point for the entire show. Like yep. so far, the first eight episodes, and this is the perfect middle episode of the entire season. Mm -hmm. It's been very focused on Omega's relationship with the Bad Batch getting established uh, and each mission after mission after mission. But now this, it's been broken because Omega is now taken away. So, I mean, it's very clear that we are fixing to switch the vibes. These past two episodes have been phenomenal and I'm sure, you know, now that we're turning the page, we're going to get some more of those here and there, like OKs or good but not great kind of episodes where they're having to build the, build the next plot line up a little bit. But regardless, there's a lot of cool things that they can go down uh, with these next ep eight episodes. You're so right. And I did not think about this being the mid-season finale, if you want to call it that. But what a great observation by you. Um, that's exactly what this felt like. It felt like a turning point for the entire show. Yeah. Um, this next half is going to be about getting Omega back. And it's going to be about getting Omega back. It's going to be about getting Crosshair back and then joining the Rebellion. That's mm -hmm. my prediction. And that's what I want to happen. I want to dig deeper into that because... Oh, another thing I want more of, bring the Empire back a little bit. Yeah. All right, we got some good stuff. And I know it's a lot to do in these 25-minute episodes. It is. And they have been packed. These past, yes. like, three have yeah. been packed. But um, now, if we are going to go back to Camino, I want to get a little bit more. But the show has stepped it up enough that I don't feel like I'm missing it as much. Right. Where like around episode four, episode five, I was like, mm, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I well, need some more. But they've established these plot lines now that we care more about that. That's we can right. Now kind of ignore the Empire stuff like we were really focused in on it after the first after the premiere, because the premiere leaned very heavy into I was going to say this was show a, is going to be about the Empire's rise. It's kind of what the premiere yes. felt like. It was a I, big it definitely point. got away from that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a big point, but um, I, I'm OK with it at this point. Yeah. I, I'm just saying, like, in this next, you know, half, we're going to we are going to dig deeper into the clones and where they sit in the Kaminoans and all that. Um, yeah, I. I'm so excited. I'm not going to lie. I, I really it's stepped its game up in these past mm -hmm. few weeks and yeah. I am loving it. I'm really glad to hear you say that. And, you know, speaking to that, you know, it was what? three three or four weeks ago where we got done recording an episode and we were just like look i hope the bad batch you know steps it up yeah. a notch because right now you know it's just not really ticking it like we expected yeah. it to after that premiere but man these pet like you said these past two or three episodes are right there and it's got me right there as far as expectation and yep. excitement level again for this uh so i can't wait 
to see the rest of this thing. It's crazy that we still have eight episodes left. Two eight. more That's months. Two more months, essentially. That's a lot more than I expected. And when you hear 16 episodes, you're like, oh, that's not too much. You know, we'll be able to get through that pretty quick. But uh, yeah, it's been two months. What, two months now, and we got two more to go. Yeah. Has it been two months? Yeah, no, eight, epi- eight months episodes. Like, yeah, that's true. But we did have that one week where there was two episodes. I think right, that's yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A month but, and a half at least. Yeah. I mean, Regardless. So, I don't know if we answered. Where do we go? Where do you think we go from here? What's next episode? We got to drop our predictions. That's true. We do have to drop our predictions. Hmm. Do we go immediately to uh, Camino? I don't think so. Okay. I think that the Bad Batch is going to have to have an episode where they kind of do they go back rally to Sid? themselves, where they have to you know perk up a little bit. Like, okay. We got to get this together and then let's go get Omega. Like one of those things where they just have to get their morale back up because right now they're defeated. I mean, this is their lowest point uh, other than witnessing Order 66. Uh, so I, I do maybe, think it's going to take us I mean, maybe one or two episodes to get there. And I hope I'm wrong. I mean, I would love to go straight to Camino and get into the action next week. But that's kind of I think that's where I'm, I'm landing. That's where I land as well. They're going to have to figure out who this bounty hunter is if he doesn't know who he is already and who's hired him. They still don't know yeah. that. Um, and I truly think that it's all going to come together in Camino with mm-hmm. Crosshair being there, with Omega being there, Bad Batch coming back. Like It's, it's going to obviously come to a head there. Yeah. Um, but I, oh, go ahead. I just thought got an interesting thought what if instead because now omega in my mind is just as much part of the bad batch as the rest of them oh oh what if we got an episode where it was omega's point of view focused only on her time in camino now that she is imprisoned i guess or however they're going to treat that because we know that the the kaminoans want her and she's going to well Take that back. For some reason, I said imprisoned. The Kaminoans aren't going to imprison her. They just need her, and they're going to be, I guess, experimenting on her in order to... That's what I would assume. ...stay relevant. So it'd be interesting to get an episode here or there where we, you know, see what that looks like. What was the one thing that you wanted to say, though? Yeah, uh, where she... Talking about Omega um, Omega coming and, like, growing up, her using the bow to take out oh, clone yes. tro- or uh, stormtroopers, clone troopers. I'm glad you brought that um, up. I, I, it's a quick scene, mm-hmm. but man, I loved it. I yeah. was just like, at a girl. Like, yeah. that's what I'm talking about right now. Proud, proud dad moment. Right yeah, there. it was. <laughs> it was a proud dad moment that it's just like, you see it and you're like, nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice job. Uh, you're murdering people greatly. Great yeah. job. You yeah. know? <laughs> But uh, no, I really wanted to bring that up, and uh, okay. I forgot I forgot to talk about no, it. But I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. I um I think you're right. I I, I would be okay with that episode. Um, mm-hmm. with having it be like a day on the life of Camino, right? Yeah, getting tested on <laughs> and whatever else they're doing. I don't understand their play with her. Um, I don't either. Is she force sensitive? <laughs> Like, seriously, no, I mean, you no, know I want her to be. Well, that's the <laughs> only thing I can think of that would. Mm-hmm. Why do they want her so bad? Why is she a girl? Why is she not a boy? Like, right. We still need that answer. I, yes. They have to answer that question. Why would they make her a female? Right. Right. And even if it's mm-hmm. as simple as we change the DNA and, you know, we were messing, we were experiment, experimenting with the DNA mm-hmm. to get a force sensitive clone and she came out as a girl. If they said that, okay, that's all I need. But I need an answer to why she's not looking like all the rest. I agree. And I think that'd be an interesting episode. I did have another thought, though, of a potential episode. Okay. I hope this isn't something we get, but Sid has information. I hope it's not one of those situations where they have to do a job for Sid in order for Sid to tell them who Cad Bane is working for and where they can find. (laughs) You got that look, man. They're going to do it. Dad Gamut. I hope not. I, I hope I did not speak that into existence. I think because I'm kind of done with those episodes personally. I'm done with the whole, 
you know, Sid's got information. Here's what you need to do for me in order for me to give you the information. And I already said earlier that I think they go back to Sid. I don't think Sid's done. Yeah. Especially so with either. Cad Bane being a bounty hunter. Yeah. Um, She's going to know something about him. And that's it's, right. It's got to be. And for right now, it seems like it would be her that they get info from. So I think that's where they go next. If I'm being honest. Okay. Um, okay. I, I think that's where they well, go next. I'll be there for it. I'll show up. We'll see. I'll, I'll give it a shot, but I will go ahead and just be straight up with you guys right now. That whole, you know, do something for me. I'll give you this in return. Episodes focused on an entire episode of that. Nah, I'm good with it. I'm good and, with that plot thread. And maybe they don't make it the episode. Mm -hmm. I, I've got a feeling that if they go back to that well, it's not going to be a whole episode's worth. Right. Um, but they've done it multiple times. <laughs> they have. They have. And Mandalorian has done it. So, yes. Yes. Mando has um, done that as well. I don't know. Hmm. We'll, we'll see. see. But we'll see. But what a regardless. Episode. Yes. That's what I was going to say. Great episode, top tier in both of our opinions. And it seems like from our listeners' opinions. But if you're, listening to this at this point first of all thank you for hanging tight with us and yeah. listening to our entire thoughts of this episode but second of all if you didn't think this was top tier if you have another opinion feel free to let us know youtube comments are always wide open a uh, discord link is always wide open so check out those two avenues to reach us but you can also reach us at mando talk on facebook twitter instagram and TikTok because we keep dropping these uh this week in Star Wars news TikTok videos. You know, we've had several from me. We got this week's from Zach. So come check both of us out on TikTok at Mando Talk there as well. Um, and yeah, keep joining in on our community. It's really fun to read comments, get input, see what you guys are thinking. And again, we really appreciate it so very much. Zach, thank you for being here yet again another week of mando talk uh what do you want to say to the peeps before we get out of here just uh thank you guys for everything this has been so fun and uh i just i can't wait to keep doing it come join us thursday uh live get in the chat let us know what you think let's do it all right let's get out of here we hope you have a blessed week and as always we have spoken